Okay, overhangs. We know that a uh, 3D printer prints layer after layer of uh, melted plastic. And each layer is supported by the layer before it. We can run into problems when you have an overhang, an angle where the plastic may not be supported by the layer before. So this right here is a uh, test print that I will use to see how well a, a printer or my settings will print overhangs. It's got a 30 degree overhang, a 45 degree overhang, a 60 degree overhang, and a 70 degree overhang. So if you take a look here, let's start. 30 degree overhang, printed pretty flawlessly. 45 degree overhang, also printed really good. There's a little bit of a grubble there, but nothing serious. Most printers can handle a 45 degree overhang without any troubles. But you'll notice as we get up to this 60 degree overhang, it's drooping. And there's a grubble right here. And all of this stuff is not as flat as it should be. And that's happening because when it's laying down this layer of plastic, there's not enough plastic underneath it to support it. So it starts to fall. Remember, it is still just melted plastic. In fact, when we get up here to the 70 degree overhang, there really wasn't enough to support it and it really started drooping. In fact, this piece had, was unsupported completely. So this is not a useful uh, or a good finish. This could possibly work, but that 45, I could trust that without uh, any support whatsoever. Bridging. Bridging is different than overhangs. In an overhang, uh, the piece will print out in open air. Bridging has it supported on one side, supported on the other side, and then bridging the gap. Printers can handle different amounts of bridging. It all depends on your settings. Now here's a test piece that I print. It's got uh, several different bridges, each of a different distance, and it allows you to kind of check to see what your printer can handle, what your settings can handle. So you'll notice here is the shortest bridge. And even it has just a little bit of droop. It was able to take from this corner and go to that corner and print out with a minimum of drooping. Now as it's printing there is a fan cooling it so it droops as little as possible so it, the faster it cools the less time it has to fall. But it's still not perfect. And you'll notice as we go up to a larger bridge and a larger bridge and a larger, the drooping gets worse. In fact, this top long bridge, there are loose pieces of filament just falling down here. If I look from the back, you can sometimes see a little better. That's a lot of drooping. See, this is the height it should have been, and anything where it's fallen down is how much it's drooped. Now you'll notice the top layer is actually pretty flat. As you get a layer of plastic, the layer above it starts having more and more support. So if it hasn't drooped very much, the layer above it's going to droop even less. And by the time we get to the top, it's flat. But I do still have this uh, droop at the bottom. Now if we have two parts that are trying to fit together in one inside each other perfectly, that droop is going to get in the way you may have to clean it up. Or you have to build in looser tolerances, so bigger gaps essentially, so it'll fit. You can print things supported, and that'll minimize the drooping. But it all depends on what you need to do with your design. Here's a more extreme example of bridging. Now on this print, I actually turned the cooling fan off. So it did not, the uh, plastic took longer to cool, so it had more time to droop. And you can really see how bad the drooping got. If I flip it to the back, you can see this drooping over here is so bad. There is just loose pieces of filament hanging out all over. This 
in my books is a useless print because the top didn't even come out straight. You can see right here. Support. Here is a large Lego man leg that one of my students designed. Here is a design that's hollow on the inside. There's bridging, there's overhangs. We decided that in the sake of making this curve right here as smooth as possible, to print it like this. Problem is, now inside you've got all those bridges. 3D printers and slicing software uh, can print what's called support structure inside, which is when they're printing, they'll also print in some temporary uh, supports in here. There, there's that example right here. See how that prints all this support inside there? That allows uh, this top layer to have support when it time comes to print. So no longer do I have to bridge across that big gap, which is a bit of a challenge. You can see that support structure. You can see over here, it's got more subtract structure printing on that overhang. It left this line alone here because this would print just fine. Once you uh, print it, the support structure is designed to be removable. So you would just grab it with a pair of pliers and you could just twist it and break it out. I've got one here where the print actually failed, so I can take it apart. And you can see all of that support structure printed inside. If you look on the back here, you can see these parts that would support the holes. And it's actually printed fairly loose. It's designed to break away as easy as possible. Now sometimes, like for instance, all of this structure up in the hip here is hard to get at but it will still break away. Now it does use a little bit of plastic, so your print is going to take more plastic than if you printed it without support. But there are times when it is the only way that a print will work. Here is the hip joint from that same Lego man. A very complicated design. It was not easy to decide which way to print it. And there was uh, no way to print it without supports. The weakest part was these actual hip joints right here, these little balls. And we decided we needed a direction of strength going this way. So the only real way to print it was down like that. So you can see the slicing software automatically generated some supports underneath those balls, underneath the uh, top of the, or the bottom of this curve. And it some supports under these pegs. This is a choice where there was nothing else we really could do to make it work right. And just when the time comes, once the print is done, you would just grab onto this support right here with a pair of pliers and well, it actually snapped away pretty good. It's not perfect underneath here. Sometimes you may need to file or sand it a little bit to clean it up. But it does work.